Hi everyone and welcome to the last section of the Parkinson's mouse tutorial. In this section we're basically going to be summarizing everything that you guys already did. Basking in our own glory so to speak. But before we get to the basking, let's talk about where what our experiment actually was. So we looked at two mice. A mouse with Parkinson's and a mouse that was healthy. Each donor's fecal material was transplanted into six mice. Three of the mice were considered susceptible, which means they were predisposed to developing Parkinson's disease due to a mutation, while three of them were considered wild type, which means that they were resistant to developing Parkinson's. The mouse microbiome, gut microbiome, is characterized by sampling their feces, and we did that at four time points over a six-week period, or seven-week period, my bad. So our hypothesis is that the genetic background of a recipient mouse shapes its fecal community. Now let's review some highlights that help us, helped us come to that conclusion. We found that donor is a primary driver of alpha diversity. This evenness plot should look familiar from our alpha diversity analysis tutorial. We were able to see that the healthy and the Parkinson's mouth were significantly different in terms of alpha diversity. In our beta diversity PCOA plot, we saw that healthy donor and Parkinson's mouth donor were significantly different. But it didn't show us that the genetic background of a mouse had much effect. When we ran the Adonis plot, we saw that genotype had a pretty significant effect on beta diversity. We then looked at bar charts at the phylum level between donors and genotypes. This is the genotype look view, and we were not able to see any differentiation from these bar charts. Looking at ACOM and random forest classification, we were able to see that there were unique ASVs with no overlap between donor and genetic background. This supports the hypothesis that the difference is due to genotype and the differences due to donor are separate. So this is our ACOM volcano, which should be familiar, and we looked at different unique ASVs, and we were able to see that there were unique ASVs between the healthy mouse and the Parkinson's mouse. We were also able to see that there were unique ASVs that differentiated the microbiome of the susceptible mouse and the wild type mouse. Lastly, we looked at volatility plots and temporal analysis that showed that the microbiome in different genetic backgrounds changed differently over time. Here we can see that the susceptible, the blue, and the wild type, the orange, change differently over the time of the days post-transport. And we can see that the healthy mouse and the Parkinson's mouse also change significantly. This is the data that backs up that the distance from the donor was significant while the distance from the wild type was nearly significant. And that's it. We have data that suggests that there is a genotype specific effect on the microbiome of the mouse receiving fecal transplant as, as well as the donor affecting the microbiome of the mice. And congratulations, you have finished the Parkinson's mouse tutorial. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you guys learned a lot.